everyone, it's Jamie the Crafty DIY Guy. Welcome to my channel. Now I am very excited about today's DIY projects because they all feature a variety of items I am overhauling from Dollar Tree and some of my various thrift hauls. Also, what's very cool about all of these projects is that they incorporate my latest gadget to my craft room, the Microlux Mini Miter Saw by Micromarks Tools. This powerful tool is only five inches wide and eight inches deep and six inches high, which means it is the perfect size for your DIY or crafting room spaces. It comes with one blade that's already installed and you can do cuts with it from 45 degree or 90 degrees. You literally can plug this in and get started cutting because the blade that's already installed will cut through a variety of materials, including wood, aluminum, brass, steel, and more. Now, let's get started on our projects, and I will show you all of the bells and whistles of this Microlux Mini Miter Saw by Micromark Tools. Also, be sure to check out the description box below on how you can order one of these tools for your very own workshop. And of course, before I get started, I have to say thank you to all of my long-term subscribers. You know, I call you guys my OGs. That just means original gangster, all-time friends, the old gang. It has a lot of different meanings, but it's definitely a meaning of love. You guys, I'm so happy for all of our friendships and getting to know you guys over the past few years. It's really been incredible. Also, if you're brand new to the channel, welcome, of course. Hopefully, you will become an OG someday. And then, of course, if YouTube happened to recommend this video to you, thank you, YouTube. And uh, let's get started. And for my next project, I'm going to be using this kind of jewelry box thing that I picked up at a thrift haul several weeks ago. I love this because it did have these drawers and I thought that it would be a pretty cool upcycle or a, a redo. I paid $3.03 for it, so I knew that this could be perfect. I'm going to use some of these Dollar Tree Jingo wood blocks. And then uh, for the hardware and the drawers and everything, I'm actually going to paint everything. And I'm going to be removing all of this hardware from these drawers also. So these drawers were a little tricky. It was funny. They actually looked like they were screwed on and uh, they were to some degree, but they were also stuck on there. So I took my little mini screwdriver here and just started to twist and turn and then realized that I could just pluck them off. So that's what I did. The handles that are on the side of the box, they are going to have to stay. This is a, um, a strange kind of a screw or whatever that is holding it in and it will leave a very big hole if I take those out. So for the drawers themselves I'm actually going to spin them around and I'm going to put them with this flatter side facing out. Um, I did this because the holes that were left from taking the handles off on the other side is not real great. I was originally going to put these knobs from Dollar Tree on there but you'll see I end up switching that up at the very last minute and I'm actually really really happy with the way it turned out. Now for the top here, I want to create some dividers and I think I'm gonna use these Jenga blocks from Dollar Tree. The great thing about the Jenga blocks is that the height is perfect. Um, if you stack two of these on top of each other, they fit perfectly with this box. The problem is the very last row, the Jenga blocks aren't really going to fit in there. So I have to figure out a way to cut them because they barely, barely fit. And the idea here is that I'd be able to put my glue gun and maybe my heat gun, maybe even a staple gun or supplies or something on the top level there. And then in the drawers, I could use those for glue and other things. But I need to figure out this divider system before I can do any of that. For the top of the box also, I tried to decide what would look better. Um, I went back and forth of using this cork sheet that I picked up from Dollar Tree. I could also use one of the floor mats from Dollar Tree and just trim that down. That way it would be rubber on the inside. I think I'm gonna end up going with the cork option as well, but wanted to actually show you some various options that you could use. So for the top of the box, I do need to go ahead and put in my dividers. I'm gonna start by taking my Jenga wood box pieces and just gluing two of them together like this. Each row is going to have a total of eight blocks. The problem is six of the blocks fit perfectly. The last two sets of blocks are not going to fit. So I'm gonna to have to figure out a way to trim them down. And I think I've got the perfect tool to do that with. Now to cut those wood blocks, I could certainly use a handsaw, but because this cut is going to be very fine and very detailed, I am going to be using instead my Microlux Mini Miter Saw from Micromark Tools. I absolutely love this product. 
Now, before we start cutting anything, let me tell you about this powerful tool that is only five inches wide by eight inches deep by six inches high, which means it is the perfect size for your DIY or craft room. It comes with one blade that's already installed and you can literally cut from 45 degree angles to 90 degree angles. You literally plug this in and begin cutting. And what's great about this saw is that it will cut through a variety of materials, including wood, aluminum, brass, steel, and more. All right, let's get to cutting. Check that out, how easy it is to use. I'm able to cut the blocks down to the perfect size to be able to finish the rows on my storage organizer. After I knew everything would fit, I took everything outside and spray painted them individually. Remember, I'm gonna be placing the cork down in the bottom of that tray or the top of that tray. So I didn't want to stick anything down and obviously spray paint over top of that. So after everything was dried, I took everything back inside and started to reassemble my storage box. As I mentioned, instead of using that floor mat from the car, I'm actually gonna be using the cork instead. I like the way that the color just kind of popped against the black. And I think that this is going to be the best option for me, really. What's great about these cork sheets from Dollar Tree is that they already have an adhesive back, so it makes it very, very easy to install and to stick this. Again, if you wanted to use that car mat that you can also pick up from Dollar Tree, you could certainly use that. I just peeled the backing off and just stuck this down to the top, kind of like so. After I everything was set, then it was time to start installing the walls of the storage uh, grid. I guess they're walls. We'll call them mini walls because I've got the mini miter saw. But before we get to the walls, of course, I need to install the handles on the front of those drawers. I told you I was going to go with something a little different. And for this, I am going to be using these birch wood pieces on the front of my drawers. How cool and manly will that be? Now, after I had the birch knob set up, I loved the way this looked. I especially love the way it played off of the cork and the coloring. I think everything is going to work perfectly together. Now it's time to install those mini walls that I created with the Microlux Mini Miter Saw. As you can see, they fit perfectly on the inside. So now I'm just gonna add a generous amount of hot glue to the bottom and to the sides and stick them into place. Once everything was done, I stocked it up, and as you can see, I am now perfectly organized. I have a space for my staple gun, my glue guns, my heat gun, and my supplies. Anything that I'm going to need is within reach of this great storage unit. All you have to do is look for some sort of jewelry box when you're out and about thrift shopping, and you can recreate your very own storage unit like this. My next project is actually a dupe of Jennifer's project from A Little Bit of Common Crazy. I absolutely loved these vases that she made with these crafter square wood snakes. And I just had to recreate it because I wanted it for my own home. And I knew that my Microlux mini miter saw would be perfect for the project. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my snakes and figure out where I need to cut their head and their tail off. Unfortunately, that's the reality of this particular project. So I'm just going to mark it with a pencil and then I'm going to use my Microlux Mini Miter Saw to cut their heads and tails off. Now, this only works for the wood variety of snakes. Don't try and use this for a real snake. It, it probably would get a little messy. And uh, once I have my marks, then I'm going to go ahead and just chop off that head and tail of the snake. Now, in all fairness to Mr. Snake here, he is a little bit big for this Microlux Mini Miter Saw to chop through. However, if you get it right along one of those joint lines, you can see that his head will pop off pretty easily. So it's really just a matter of kind of lining that up. The other thing that you could certainly do with this is that you could rotate the uh, snake body around if you had to. I actually did that with the tail section first and then uh, just you know trim away any extra or any kind of leftover pieces that you may have from this. That was more my fault than the saw's fault for sure. But uh, once you figure out kind of how to use that, then you will see that your snakes fit perfectly around the base of that face. Now, since I had one snake that was already cut down, I am going to use that as my guide and just use that to chop the other two snakes up. That way I have three of these rings. I'm gonna stop calling them snakes because I feel like once we take their head and tail off that we, we can't really call them a snake anymore. So uh, we'll call them a, a decorative accent. And so now, once again, I'm just lining that up in the Microlux Mini Miter Saw. I'm making sure that it's nice and tight with that 
uh, vice. And as you can see, I hit that joint exactly where I said I would. This sounds so creepy, right? Like I'm decapitating and, and taking the tails off of these snakes. And then uh, once again, putting it back into place. In between your cuts, make sure you're turning the saw off for safety. You wanna make sure that you're safe when you're doing this. And this one, I didn't quite hit it where I needed to hit it, so I'm gonna to have to rotate it around. Again, turning the saw off, removing it from the vise and the clamp itself, and just literally flipping it around, lining it up again where I need to cut it, making sure that that vise is tight again. You can see I almost forgot to do that. And then once again, just kind of chopping back down through it and his tail will pop right off. All right, so overall, I would say that this was actually pretty cool. I loved the way this worked. Again, these snakes were a little bit big for this guy, but as you can see, he powered right through it and chopped them off. It's more about with this one lining up those joints and it chops right through it with no issues. So once I had all three of my decorative accents chopped up, it was time to go ahead and just start putting them around the base of the vase. All I'm doing is taking my wood decorative accent thing that I chopped the heads and the tails off of and literally just gluing them together with some Shure Bonder wood glue. Once that first ring was set and dried, then it was just a matter of adding the second and the third to create this gorgeous decorative face. I absolutely love the way this looks. Huge, huge shout out to Jennifer from A Little Bit of Common Crazy. I will link her video below so you can definitely check out her channel if you're not already checking it out. I absolutely love the way this looks. It has such a high-end look. It really looks like something that you purchased at Pottery Barn or Restoration Hardware or a very, very similar store. And again, a huge shout out to Jennifer for the idea. Thank you for making my home a little nicer with your great idea. And for my last project, I'm going to be taking one of these home signs from Dollar Tree. I loved the tabs that were on the back. It was going to be very, very easy to kind of repurpose this. Also, I'm going to be using two packages of those Dollar Tree dowel rods. These are the longer dowel rods. You could uh, certainly use the shorter ones as well if you wanted to. You could even play with the pattern. I love that home sign. I'm going to save that to repurpose that. And then for these little black tabs, I'm going to pull those off with my pliers. And then we are going to begin chopping. Now for this project, I'm going to be taking these dowel rods and I'm going to be placing them lengthwise along that frame. So I did go ahead and measure out one and cut one already. And then for the other pieces, I'm literally just going to line them up. I'm going to kind of make sure that they're as straight as possible, just kind of eyeballing it there with my finger. And then I'm going to mark them with a pencil and then I'm going to start chopping. It is literally that easy. The next thing I'm gonna do is take out the Microlux mini miter saw and my dowel rods, and I'm just going to cut them down on that line that I drew on each one of those with my pencil. I'm literally just going to place this in the vise. I'm gonna push that red button down, which allows the lever to go up and down, turn the power on and chop right through that dowel rod. Now, for your safety, I do recommend that you turn off the saw in between each cut and just line those up and cut them. It's very therapeutic actually, and I love how quick and how clean those cuts are. So literally now I'm just going to go through the rest of my package and get enough of these cut that it fills in the bottom of that frame, which will now become a tray. Now that I have everything cut down, I'm going to take some hot glue and just add it around the edge of that frame there. And then I'm going to take all of those dowel rods that were perfectly cut by the Microlux Mini Miter Saw and just put those into place, creating the bottom of my tray. Now to make sure that everything is supported on the tray, I am going to chop down a couple more dowel rods just to give me some cross beam support there along the bottom. Literally, once again, I'm taking my Microlux Mini Miter Saw, chopping them down to the proper size and then just gluing them into place. Now, I originally intended to cover the bottom of this with rocks, but then I thought that it might look kind of cool if it had a water element. Now, I can't add water to this, but I can certainly paint it blue. So I took part of my tray and painted it blue, giving it a water effect, and then added some of my rocks and succulents, kind of creating my own little coastline with my succulent garden. And once it was all complete, this is what it looked like when it was done. I love the way this succulent garden looks. It gives me a very cool, chill, relaxed vibe that I love so much in my office.